Thank you so much for having me again. I was excited to see that it was going to be you. Yeah, this uh, we have all been talking about this show since we watched it. <laughs> um, and has anyone decided if that's in a good way or a bad way yet? It, it's insane in like the best way possible. So I I uh, very much appreciate just how absolutely batshit crazy the show is. Um, but it was funny because I think I was the first person that watched the whole season so I was like just waiting for somebody to like have a conversation with him <laughs> and uh yeah so uh, it was I mean like- that's the thing about the show that I, I I you know that kind of like we were all joking when we were making it Nick and Lenore and I like especially shooting some of those some of the crazier scenes you know like and Matt Sobel who directed the fourth episode like when we did that crazy sex scene yeah. We were just like, I mean, it's hard to think people won't want to talk about this, whether or not they like it. You know, it's just so it's I know the feeling of feeling like because I spent that I was I read that scene in in uh, probably it was like October of 2019. So like I've been thinking about it since then. And I've been like, I am so curious what people are going to think of this. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Yeah, and it was funny because I remember we briefly talked about it when I spoke to you for the last season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I had no idea, so. <laughs> I'm so, That's the thing, because I think like, I, I don't think, you know, anyone did or does kind of until you see it. I think that you have to kind of like, and I really, I it's it's been cool because, you know, obviously it's not even properly come out until today, but it does seem like people are appreciating that it's unique and that it's a big swing. And I, and that is immediately, you know, like Nick, all of Nick's work, this is my third uh, thing with Nick and Tosca and all of his work is always like that to me. And I think there's like a bravery and a brilliance in that. So I'm, I, it's very cool to, that, that other people respond to it because it's wild and like, you don't know, you really don't know. <laughs> yeah, and you definitely can't half-ass it with a show like this. It just would never have worked. Yeah, that's, and, and luckily the cool thing about that, I think that's so true is like when you, when you have Catherine Keener and Rosa and Eric and Manny and Hannah Levine and you know all these people like they're such great actors that they can like you know keep it in some sense of realism even though it's like obviously the furthest thing from it so it's a very it's it's yeah it's a tightrope well before we get further into episode four going back to the beginning (laughs) how much were you told about this what did they tell you like what did Nick say when he mentioned this project (laughs) He, so, um, you know, we had worked on Channel Zero together and I knew, uh, you know, he, he's so distinct. So I, I, I knew when this came around that it would be something really different and something exciting. And, um, but I didn't, that's the cool thing about like cracking a Nick and Tosca script, I think, or, or a book or a short story is like you, it always, I think, ends in a way that's going to, I remember when he first pitched me my character arc on Channel Zero, I consider myself a fairly intelligent, you know, story mind. And like, I can usually somewhat predict where things are going. And I remember the first time he told me that, like my jaw dropped. So it was a very cool, um, you know, to get, I didn't know exactly what to, what to expect. And then when I knew I was doing it and him and I were talking about it, he was like, let me send you the first uh, five episodes that those scripts are ready. You can read them and see what you think. And I read them and like, yeah, I mean, you know, not to jump right back into the fourth episode, but like <laughs> when I read that script, I was like, I got nervous. I was like, I've never done, I've never done anything like this. I've never seen anything like this. Like, this is really crazy. And and I was very nervous at first. And then when I got over that, it was, I mean, how many times you get to do a scene that you feel like has never really been done before. So, you know, there's some excitement to it. Or have a relationship where all of a sudden the girl is throwing up kittens and he just keeps showing back up. Like Never that would be the first clue to, to get as far away <laughs> as possible. 
<laughs> that's that's something that I actually, you know, I, I think that like we stumbled into with Roy in general it was something that like there there had to be kind of a magnetism about her and sort of a, <laughs> um, a sweetness that it brings out in him what, that he doesn't normally feel for people. Because that was the only way I could justify in my mind exactly what you're saying. Why does he keep coming back to this like kitten vomiting, you know, like dr clearly drugged out, like insane girl that has trouble following her around. I think it's like, I really feel like Rosa and I would talk about it sometimes. In my mind, it feels like um, it's a bit of like their story is a bit of a Romeo and Juliet. Like they would have been a perfect pair and could have been, the, you know, the perfect ones for each other. But this curse changed things so that, you know, it was it was it was an interesting challenge to try and justify that. And, and hopefully we hopefully we made some sense of it. I mean, in his defense, it is a bit, it's an escalation. It's not like it's all happening at one time, but still like at some point you would think he'd be like, okay, this is the fifth kitten I've seen you throw up. I'm out of here. And he tries. I mean, he try. <laughs> he does his best to get away from her and to tell her, I can't see you anymore. Like, and I can't, I can't keep doing this. And it's, you know, it's like, it's also something that is always was interesting and, 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 fun to me is it's you know it's the power of like that kind of insane having feelings for someone it's like you look past the kitten throwing up because you're like ah oh, she'll she'll be cool she'll be cool she'll figure it out <laughs> well with all of the craziness and all of these wild like what the fuck moments was there anything that you were scared about being at actually able to pull off or was it all just excitement and it was up to Nick to figure out how to do it? It was uh, getting my head pulled off. Was, <laughs> that was uh, challenging. And, um, and I just, it was a very, it was very funny because like everyone, <laughs> everyone was um, covered in these like white hazmat suits because there was so much blood everywhere that when we were doing those, um, we were doing those scenes and it was very funny because like all the, there was kind of a giddiness uh, on, on set about it. And everyone was like, yeah, we're pulling his head off. It was hard not to feel weird about it at a certain point because like 50 people were like sitting around like, this is it, this is it. So we're going to rip his head clean off, off, off. And then they're going to eat what's left of it. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh my God. Why is everyone so happy about this? But it was, um, and it was like a legit, it was, it was very tough to pull off logistically. Like it was a lot of different um, angles and a lot of different, you know, trying to like, th then there was a puppet that was involved and, and, you know, so there was like a lot of different, so that was a very technically challenging and that scene in general, just with yeah. Boro and Lisa and, and Roy kind of in that standoff with all the zombies around and, you know, code is there and all that stuff. Like that was just such a gargantuan scene to do. It took like two or three days, but um, yeah. So that was a technical one that I, and I remember uh, the first time I heard and saw a storyboard for when uh, Roy gets literally pulled apart by these zombies. Yeah. And um I was kind of like, whoa, I mean, that's crazy, but I'm into that. The, the, the sex scene scared me more. <laughs> I was like, this is, this feels more frightening. Yeah. But, um, and it was also, you know, like, I remember the first time I saw the Jaguar demon, the, the thing that like, was like that, like, and it was horrifying in real life. <laughs> like it did not look any less crazy. So that was another one that was a fun, that was a fun challenge. Yeah, I was curious with that scene with them removing your head which you know at least they've reattached again properly um I was you know wondering how much of that was done with makeup and prosthetics and things that were there how much was CGI how much was a puppet like I was just wondering like how that all, had all been all done practical yeah because it looks really good yeah I'm glad I'm glad it's it's it, it was almost all practical it was like a lot of um uh, like reverse shots and like doing things backwards and like and I had to stand there dying with blood coming down my neck for like a full minute and like several times and we had to change me out because it was so much such an unbelievable amount of blood but um 
it was it was really it was cool too because like i have such a affinity for practical effects and obviously grew up on that so that was to get to not have to be reliant on cg for sequences like that and and the kittens like the kittens to me the fact that those are practical is such is the, it makes the it makes all the difference in the world because they look amazing they look so cool and like and they were like you know i don't want to give it away but like mm -hmm. they're on like you know they're being puppeted and like mm -hmm. it's it's just a very I, I was so I loved all the practical, especially for such a 90s vibe. It, it really I think it fits tonally. Yeah, I mean, it sounds weird to say that, like, the scene of your head being ripped off was done well, but it was. And what was it like for you to watch that the first time, like the finished scene? The first time I saw it, it was not like colored and kind of like it wasn't completely, completely done. And there was like, you know, I think that there is like a little bit of CG cleanup in, in, in some of the in some of the shots and that stuff hadn't gotten done yet. But when I have seen it, I mean, I was like, I definitely watched it and was like, I got to warn my mom and dad about <laughs> this because I, they, I they're, if they're going to watch this, I think it's unfair to let this sneak up on them because it does look incredibly real. <laughs> so that's, you know, and and. To, to Nick, you know, to, it's it's difficult to pull that off. It's difficult to get. And and there was, um, I had to sit, you know, as, as many people do, but I had to sit under just like hours and hours of silicone and like breathing through straws to get, you know, that the fascia. And it was, it was up to my chest. So it was like to get my whole bust and then uh, rip it clean off and start eating out of it. So. <laughs> well, when it came to doing that sex scene, what were the conversations and discussions like when it came to that? Like how, because there hadn't been, I'm, you haven't read anything like that, nothing's been done like that. Like how, how were those conversations about what it would be, how it would be conveyed? Um, we talked about how I talked to Nick and Matt about, uh, Matt Sobel directed that one and uh, Nick, I talked to them about how I wanted it to be the most fucked up version of two people falling in love that I've ever seen. <laughs> like the like the moment that they fall in love is this moment, and they were both into that. <laughs> they both really, you know, Matt had the idea that I love that um, the whole show is. Uh, th there's there's no handheld shots in the show except for that scene. There's uh, when it when it goes to her coming off the bed, it, it turns into a handheld shot and stays in one in one take for a lot of it. And I think that that lends it such an incredible, like literally breaking out of the kind of rhythm of like her life and the show and his life and like they actually kind of like I, I in my mind really fall in love with each other in this crazy moment. And I think he's like, that we played with like, how confused is he? How turned on is he? What is it that he's going through? Because he does it. So what's the level of comfort? But, and we tried to, you know, find a balance where it was kind of like, interesting because I, it felt like she, she, you know, Rose is such a powerful performer. Like it was, it, when it happened, it just kind of took on its own life. And I remember the last take that we did, which was the one that's in the show, Nick and Matt running in and being like, you know, we got it. Like that was, <laughs> that was crazy. And, and, and it was, you know, like the first time I saw it, the first time I saw the, <laughs> the, the hole, the side hole, I, it was like, it, it was crazy. She also, Rosa played a mean joke on me that she goes, check it out. And she goes, touch it. And I leaned my hand in and she goes, ow. And it really freaked me out. And she was obviously messing with me, but it was, it was, it, it scared the shit out of me. Cause I was like, the thing just made me nervous, but it was, you know, and it was like, when we were doing it, I also remember there's a shot where like, it goes up to my forearm and I remember when we were doing that, I was like doing it to, and it was at that point, it was a mannequin, like it wasn't her anymore. Most of it is her, but then at just that point, it's not. And I remember like looking at it and it was, and I was like, I, I, this is horrible. <laughs> like I was like, this, I'm, I'm doing it. I see how fake it is and it's 
freaking me out. Like when this is, and when it's all cut together and real, I mean, like, you know, it is almost unbearable, but hopefully, you know, if it's your thing cinematically, it's in, it's in a good way. I mean, it's, a, it's in that car accident, like, you know, th hopefully the story's earned it. And so, you know, like when it's, when it gets to that point, you kind of can't take your eyes off it. I mean, or you can very much take your eyes off it and you turn the show off forever. One of those two things. Yeah, it definitely cannot exist in any other show. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, he, he's very accepting of this. Like he doesn't question it. He just like, is very accepting of this. Because it's also like, because the, I think that there's such a beautiful moment of connection between the two of them before it happens. You know, I think that to me, it's the most vulnerable and beautiful moment um, that Lisa has in terms of like her personal life and her pathos is like that monologue that she has about her mother beckoning her in through this trap door. And Roy, you know, is clearly relates to that and has some conflicting feelings and past of his own that, you know, feels like that conjures up. So it feels like, it feels to me always like the reason that that scene can exist in such an insane way is because there is this, and I, you know, give so much credit to Nick and Lenore for this, that there is this real moment of connection and this real identification between the two characters of like, oh, I see you and I think you see me back. And it then leads to, you know, okay, that's your thing. I guess that's your thing. I don't know. <laughs> Was it weirder to watch that scene or to watch your own head being ripped off? Definitely that scene. <laughs> the head ripped off was like oh yeah it's crazy but like the that sex scene has been like it's 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 bananas I mean and I and I you know I'm very proud to have done it even though I was very afraid to do it yeah I mean anytime anybody pulls something off that you've never seen before could never imagine and probably will never see again definitely needs a, a kudos for that. <laughs> I appreciate that because I that's that's how I feel, and and it takes it takes um it takes uh, some bravery to be able to to be able to do that, uh, you know, for Nick and Lenore. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably more afraid of whoever actually put it on paper, but yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was just told what to do. They just told me. They just told me. I was like, y'all are sick. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you. <laughs> well, what what was it like to work with Rosa throughout this? Because there are so many crazy things that happen, and the emotions of this are often very heightened. So, what was it like to go through that with her? How is she as a scene partner? She's, you know, I mean, Rosa is a super talented actor, and she, I admire, you know, her and I both share a deep love for. Um, acting and and film and and the history of both of those things and she brings so much to every scene and it's and I you know it is incredibly difficult when you are when you have a role like hers where you're in every scene and you have so much to do all the time and you have such heightened and surreal elements that you have to pull off it's a very, very difficult job. And I think that, you know, she showed up ready to do it every single day, which in, in and of itself takes, uh, you know, a kudos. But um, she also is, she is, uh, she's a bit of a perfectionist and driven, you know, constantly to get the best thing. And I feel the same way. So it, it, it made for um, both of us being always really determined to get the most effective and interesting and different, you know, um, ter terms of storytelling into, into a given scene. But, um, you know, I really, she, she was amazing. And I, I was, uh, I was blown away by, I feel like it, it's in a show like that, it is very dependent on that performer, whoever it is to really show up in the most, you know, the, like, for instance, one of my favorite moments in the series is when she is the, the end of the first episode, when she throws up the cat for the first time, like that to me is like such a amazing and 
uh, beautifully performed, you know, like, and really vulnerable and, you know, and, and, and another, another scene that I love of her so much is when she comes to me and she's tripping on, on the poison and we have to have, we have to have sex again, you know, in order for the blood magic to work. <laughs> yeah. This show. And, uh, and it's funny because like when she was doing that scene, she was cracking me up because she's, she's so real in someone that's like tweaking out on drugs, but kind of has a mission that they need to do. And I, you know, I, I, I feel like the craziest moments work because of her performance and that, you know, it, 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 it needed it and she delivered. So it was, she, I think she did an excellent job. Yeah. And Catherine Keener too, as the other anchor, because like that character could have been, could have just gone so wrong in so many ways. <laughs> And I think she's just brilliant in that role. I always used to, we would, I would joke whenever I would see her, I was like, I love that her, she's like homeless couture. Yeah. She's like the, she's like the craziest, like trash pile of the highest fashion. And, and it makes, you know, she, she too. I mean, Catherine is so, she's been an idol of mine for a long, long time. So when I was, I was I was so excited <laughs> that I got to work with her because I was just like, you're Catherine Keener. I mean, like, come on, like, you know, and she and what was cool about her is she just she showed up so uh so, with so much um um I just learned so much watching her come to work all the time because she's so good, but she's so alive and so, you know, just exactly in the moment and she's so funny so so funny so like I you know I was like there were scenes where I was like I'm pretty good at not laughing in scenes and like she sometimes I would just be like ah ah <laughs> like that's because it would just she's bored and she would just you know scream I'm Boro all the time so it's like yeah of course yeah it takes crazy cat lady to a whole new level sure does yeah yeah <laughs> I haven't thought about that that's very true yeah 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 <laughs> yeah it's kind of frightening I will never look at that the same again yeah uh, you've been doing such a wide variety of projects from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to this to Hacks. I mean, like you couldn't get three more different shows if you tried. Is any of that intentional? Are you enjoying that? Is it weird to be so like completely all over the map? It's it's a little bit intentional. It's, uh, you know, it's also luck. I mean, like, because you never really, you, you do your best to to try and find interesting stuff to do but like you know it doesn't always work out and like you never whether you get to do the thing you thought was interesting or whether you do the thing it's interesting and it didn't turn out the way that you hoped or thought it would mm -hmm. but you know shield obviously <laughs> you know is is um feels like home you know that is like such a that was such a long that was such a big part of my life and then you know to get to then uh Cherry Flavor, I actually shot Cherry Flavor first and then Hacks after that. You know, Deke on S.H.I.E.L.D. has such a wonderful variety of kind of uh, being the goof, but also showing up when he needs to and being kind of uh, anti-hero in certain, in certain respects. And then, you know, like getting to do Cherry, which was like so <laughs> no holds barred, like, you know, everything was on the table, like, you know, kind of like where shield felt like such a marvel tried and true you know we know this works kind of like you know this is our playground cherry flavor we were you know completely building a new playground that had never been built before and the and the slide has like weird spikes on it but <laughs> but you know like it was it was such a you know that that was so liberating because it was such an inverted experience um from shield and it's it, you know it feels like it feels like different cuisine you know like pizza and sushi it's like it's it's such a fun thing to be able to bury that up and then going to hacks like paul called me and asked me to do the table read for for that part and i immediately fell in love with it because i was like this is this is Paul Rudd in the first act of a rom-com except he kills himself <laughs> like it's such a that's so amazing like it's so weird and so like it to find humor and 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 humanity in that was like such a completely different you know um style and 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 just to, to keep the same analogy playground 
but uh, that it, one that ended where he died. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it was, it's a very, um, it, it's something that I hope to, to continue to do because I'm interested in all of those things. What I'm noticing about myself is that like, I feel like whatever I've just done, I kind of want to do something totally different and opposite than that. It's, that's kind of what seems to be the, and it, it feels like it might happen again, we'll see, but uh, it's, it's, so I, I, you know, I felt like um, Roy and George were so, at least try, you know, it's, it's funny to try and call either of those things naturalism because they're ultimately very <laughs> crazy, but like much more, you know, kind of like a, a bit for Cherry Flavor, like for instance, playing Roy, Justin Thoreau in Mulholland Drive was a huge inspiration for me. Like kind of that, him serving that um, function in the story of kind of this like getting caught up all in it but not knowing exactly what's going on but kind of going with it but like you know and being a good uh, probably a, a fairly good person maybe or like you know maybe a bad person that gets caught up in all of this like so I think that there's like kind of a um there's an understatement ho hopefully that I was trying to go for I think in both of those because I was trying to like undercut the bigger things that were going on so it feels kind of like I'm now right now kind of more like wanting to do something a bit more heightened and a bit more uh, crazy, like as, as, an, as its own character. Yeah. I was like, where do we go from here? So yeah. like, <laughs> you're a musical, like what? <laughs> I mean, the, I, I, I can't talk about it, but if I, but if <laughs> the thing I hope it is, then um, I, I think <laughs> I'll, we'll have another conversation about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because this definitely, I mean, I'm glad that people are seeing it now because I'm, I'm having more and more conversations about it now, but this is certainly one of those things that you watch and you're like, oh my God, I have to talk to somebody right now. I'm so, I'm so happy because that is kind of, you know, with a show like this, that's kind of, I think that's what we were always hoping for is something that would just be engaging enough to get people excited and want to talk about it. And, you know, cause I, that's all of my favorite stuff. That's what happens. You know, it's like, it's gets you want, it makes you want to, I just finished, I just finished the second season of Dave. And like, I just think it's such a fantastic show. And I'm like, oh my God, has anybody seen this? I got to talk about it. <laughs> like, so it's, I, I know the feeling and it's a, it's a, it, I'm honored. Uh, I'm honored that you, that you feel that way. Yeah, cause it is wild. And, and it is definitely a show that you want to talk about, which, you know, I just, it shouldn't work. And somehow you all managed to pull it off. And I don't know how, because it really shouldn't work, but it does. That's, I think that's a fair description. And, and Nick and Lenore would not argue with you. And I, I yeah, it's like, I, but I think that that's kind of what's exciting too, is, you know, the Mahal and Drive aspect of things like that you know, obviously the history of it with uh, him shooting it, you know, as a pilot and then just like adding on the rest. Yeah. It's like, that shouldn't work. That is like, that shouldn't yield one of the best movies I, in my humble opinion, ever made. But like, you know, for some reason, it's just, it's just a weird enough and just enough of a, of an attempt at something different that it, it, it makes something cool. And I hope that's what we kind of pulled off with this. Yeah, and I have to say, I loved Mulholland Drive too. I still am not entirely sure I fully know what it was about, but I love it because I That's love- so exciting. I love David Lynch. Twin Peaks will for always always and forever be my favorite show, even Amazing. though I still I don't it. fully yeah. understand it. So, <laughs> you know, and I was, I was, I think I was in high school when the Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me movie came out and all uh -huh. of my friends worked in uh, the movie theater in Sherman Oaks. So I would go see the movie over and over again and be the only one in the theater because nobody else wanted to see it just so that I could try to understand what it was about every time I saw it. Did you ever get any closer? I feel like every time I saw it, like maybe I understood one more scene than I did yeah. the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I saw it like a dozen times and I still don't fully know what was going on. That's how I am with Mulholland Drive. I feel like I, I always like the blue box. I always like to think about what that 
is and like exactly and i it's so funny too because i feel like i'm like i feel like i get it but i think david lynch would laugh at me if i explained it <laughs> i love that david lynch is never going to explain anything to no. anybody because it's just no. not who he is because i yeah. did the junket from all and drive and the actors were like we don't know but it was david lynch and he told us to do it so we did no way that's very cool yeah wow. and I feel like that's just how you work with him you just yeah. trust him yeah. and you do what he says and and that's, that's what just how it goes got scary too because it felt like it felt like with um a Mulholland Drive and a David Lynch like it's it's so much more purposely poetic you know it's so much it's 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 very much uh, intentionally vague and kind of make it of it what you will and you know the perfect representation of a dreamscape but it feels like with cherry there is a um there is there is you know a a a, a, a mystery to it that is kind of like doled out and you do get to kind of understand and it's interesting because like I'll, i've seen a lot of people say they don't after they've seen the series that they don't know what the title means i i think i i have a guess of what the title means but i i you know it's like people so a lot of people are like it's totally random i don't think it's that random but i think i think there's some i think there's some meaning to it but that'll be that'll be my lynchian mystery <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it I, I love especially you know with somebody like david lynch you just you know he's not going to have those conversations so it's okay and you just go with it yeah and that's, that's kind of, I just, I love this. I just, I didn't know where it was going, but I'm like, I'm just going to keep going with it because I'm all in now. Whatever yeah. else happens after episode four, I'm just all in. <laughs> and that's it. That's, we were, we, that's what we were talking about too, is kind of like, hopefully it has that effect that once you've seen, you know, once you kind of get pulled enough in and I, I felt it the first time I saw the show, I felt like I felt it happen at the end of the pilot. Like, you know, when she goes to confront Lou, and Lou choke slams her, and then she goes to Boro and throws up a kitten, and she wants to set his life on fire. I, I remember I read that in the script, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" And then I saw it, and I was like, "This might be a show. This is really cool." <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for talking to me about it, and uh... thank you so much for having me again. It's so great to see you again. Yeah, you too. It just this was this was wild, and I appreciate that very much about it. <laughs> I'm so I'm so excited that you appreciate its wildness instead of just you know because I think a lot of people will be turned off by it, which I understand, and and no judgment. I mean, like you know, it's it's crazy, <laughs> but you know, I do think that for people who love film and and love you know like certain genres of film and. It's, it's a very exciting thing to see something different and new and unique. And, you know, I, it's, it's the highest praise to me above being, you know, like, just like, you know, kind of a super crowd pleasy. It's like, wow, that's different. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard because with something like this too, like you don't know if it'll stick the landing properly, which yeah. always seems to like the ending of something like this always seems to be a little weird where people maybe start to doubt themselves on the crazy factor, but it went all in and kind of stayed all in, which I can appreciate. I, that's, stayed all in is a good way to say it, because like, I do think it sticks the landing. Like, I do think that it has a good and like satisfying, you know, end to it. So yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm so glad you felt that way. <laughs> well, thank you for talking to me. <laughs> thank you so much. I look forward to the next one. It's, it's always so great to talk to you.